morning, church. Morning. Oh, belated Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you, Brother Derek, for the wonderful singing, wonderful and lively singing that we have this morning. Really appreciate it. Well, you know, um, where could I go? <laughs> Just like the song that we sang. Where could I go but to the Lord? Because I know that my Redeemer lives. That's why I want to tell the story. Because I am standing on the solid rock. Aren't those the word that the song that we sang a while ago? <laughs> so glory to God for the voices that they had um, given us this morning. Again, um, a pleasant good morning to everybody. And those that are in our Zoom, a blessed good morning to you as well. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to give our heartfelt, uh, heartfelt condolences to the Richardson um, family for the passing of uh, Sister Lunell Richardson. Um, her daughter is here, Sister Marlin. Um, our um, condolences and our prayers and love to all of you. Um, last week, uh, we talked about how to sustain our joy in the Lord. And today, we will continue. We will continue our discussions on how we are going, or you're going to sustain your joy by growing in Christ's likeness. And of course, a few other things in between. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us that love is the greatest. It is all about love. Because it is love that, motiva that motivates God, the Father, you know, to give His Son for all of us in John 3.16. And it is love for the Father and love for us that Jesus Christ humbly accepted the death on the cross. Love is the greatest because it is love that sustains our joy in the Lord. And sustaining our joy in the Lord means that we must first love Jesus, among other things. You know, by loving Jesus first and foremost is living a Christ-centered life. And living a Christ-centered life means we are to grow in Christ's likeness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, Apostle Paul said, but speaking truth in love. Then we will grow in every way and be more like Christ. You know, it's all about genuine love that we can grow in Christ's likeness. It says there, speaking in truth, speaking truth in love. The idea of speaking truth in love by Apostle Paul is that you speak the truth because you live the truth and you do it out of love. And it is by practicing the truth, you know, the way you speak, the way you live. It is by practicing the truth in love, out of your love for God and out of your love for others. Then Paul said, then you will grow in every way and be more like Christ. You will only grow in Christ's likeness when you truly love the Lord. So it's all about love. That's why Apostle Paul again in 1 Corinthians 13, 13 said that the greatest of the three is love. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But continue to grow. Grow in what? Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory now and forever. Amen. You know, the concept of growth, brothers and sisters and friends, is never stagnant. The concept of growth is never still. It never stops. Okay? It is a continuing process. It is always in motion. You are always moving, moving forward. Though they say that humans stop growing in height at a particular age, but inside of us, those in the medical field, knows that 
ourselves and our, you know, everything that is inside you, they never stop growing. Okay? So those are responsible, like your antibodies, like your cells. They must keep on growing because those things, you know, you need them to repair your body. You need them for keeping your immune system, for you to be able to be healthy. So in sense, by principle, we never stop growing. That's why we need to eat, you need to drink, you need to exercise, you know, always in forward motion and we must not stop. Or else if we stop, we will cease to exist. We will all die. Well, that's the basic principle of life. Now, do you know that some species of sharks, and I've learned this by uh, watching, um, what's that um, um, particular show? Uh, science something? <laughs> anyway, I forgot. Um, there's this particular uh, species of sharks, you know, that they will die if they stop swimming or if they stop moving. You know that. And, you know, sharks, this particular species of sharks, they need to be constantly moving. They need to swim. They need to move forward in, the, in their entire lives so that they can live. Because some shark species, they need, you know, uh, oxygen. They need uh, water to keep them alive. So if they stop moving forward, they would eventually die because they will not get enough oxygen. To survive and they will drown and they will die to grow in christ likeness is continuously learning the grace it says there continue to grow in the grace so what does it mean grace there means it is reference to the manner of the act of jesus when he was here on earth his generosity his graciousness his love his compassion that is what is meant by grace. Continue to grow in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we said last week, Apostle Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Follow me. Follow my example as I follow Christ. And that is what is meant by growing in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says there, grow in the grace and knowledge. Now, what does it mean by knowledge? It means that we must learn all there is to learn about the man behind the book, about the person inside the Bible that you are all now carrying with you, that you are all now reading. We must know the person inside that book, his teachings, his life, his decrees, the way he lived. Therefore, growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord means that the way a believer conducts himself and live must correspond to the character of our Lord Jesus Christ. And another concept of growth, my dear brethren and friends, is, you know, think of vine and the branch. Okay, I want you to think of that, the vine and the branch. A branch that is cut off from the vine will stop growing and will stop to bear fruit. The vine is what gives life to the branches, making them you know, capable of growing and capable of producing fruits. In John chapter 15, verse 4, Jesus said, Remain in me. Remain in me. As I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So Jesus Christ himself is encouraging all of us to remain in him so that we may bear fruit. So growing in Christ's likeness is abiding in Christ as you learn and follow his way of living for the rest of your life. You know, when you cut your tie with Jesus Christ and stop learning his ways, you stop growing spiritually and you will die with your sins. And that is the truth. Now remember, a uh, few weeks ago, we discussed about uh, the purpose of the devil. What is the purpose of the devil? In John chapter 10, verse 10, 
The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they, have my, that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, the thief will steal. He will rob your joy. Okay? He will kill your relationship with Jesus, the source of your joy. And he will destroy your hope of heaven, the place of your ultimate joy. Now, you see that the goal of the devil, my dear brothers, sisters, and friends, is to take away of what makes you happy, of what makes you joyful, to take away your joy. That is his goal. And for the devil, it is all about taking away your joy in the Lord, as you can see. He will rob you of your joy. He will kill your relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ being the source of our joy. And he will destroy you. He will destroy you so that you will fall short of the glory of God so that you will not reach heaven, the ultimate place of your joy. And that is the goal of the devil. Now, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It is an important decision, brethren and friends, that you have to make. What kills your joy? To sustain your joy, you must learn what kills your joy. I know someone who have this health issue back in the Philippines. You know, he feels that there is something wrong with him. All right? There is something wrong with his health, but he is afraid to see the doctor because he is actually afraid of what the doctor would find out. Okay? So what he is doing is he's just doing some self-medication. So finally, I convinced him to see a doctor. So he went to see a doctor, and the result was there was nothing wrong with him. There's nothing wrong with him. So the doctor said, you know, you must change, you, just, you must just have to change your lifestyle, okay? And maybe uh, you can visit me more often, okay? So the doctor prescribed to my friend, you know, a lifestyle change, okay? So my friend now is, he's better now than before. You know, in knowing what kills your joy, you will be better equipped. You will be able to better equip yourself with arsenals that will help you sustain your joy and defeat the devil from robbing you of your joy. Okay? If you will ignore it, let's say my friend ignore it, you know, thinking that it will go away and soon it will be okay. Now, mind you, brothers and sisters, it will never go away. It will never go away. And it might become even worse than before. And it will never be okay. Okay? Now, if you think you can do it on your own, you are terribly mistaken. Now, think about this. When Apostle Paul, when he was wrecking havoc against the believers of our Lord Jesus Christ, he was one with the devil. Uh -huh. He was one with the devil. But when Jesus showed up on him, he finally realized that he was doing the wrong way. So what he did next? What he did next? Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. He put on Christ. He clothed himself with Christ when he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and when he was baptized into Christ. Then therefore, he said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You know, the old things have passed away. And he said, behold, the new has come into being. And therefore, Apostle Paul became a new creation. He became a new creation. The old Paul had passed away. And a new Paul emerges. Okay? A new Sister Faye emerges. A new Brother Charles emerges. Because our old life, I pass away. I pass away. Now, the only way we can defeat the devil is by having Christ-centered, a Christ-centered life. 
Apostle knew the importance of a Christ-centered life. That's why across his epistles, if you will read the epistles of Apostle Paul, you know, you will read the words like buried with Christ, okay? Clot with Christ, crucified with Christ, died with Christ, a new creation in Christ, and others like that, okay? Because he knew that it is all, all about a Christ-centered life. Christ at the core of your life, and everything is peripheral. Okay? It is only by having Christ in you that you can defeat the schemes of the devil. And why is that? Apostle Paul made it clear when he said, I have been crucified <clears throat> with Christ. It is no longer I who live, <clears throat> but Christ <clears throat> excuse me, who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, he defeated the devil by crucifying his, his old self with our Lord Jesus Christ and making Christ live in him and work through him. Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, let Christ live in you and let Christ work in you and work through you. Let him live. Let him be the one living in you, just like what Apostle did and experienced. When Jesus is truly at the center of your life, you have a great ally. Amen? You have a great ally. And Jesus will help you fight the battle. And you will win. For sure. You will win. You can never lose if you have Jesus in you. Amen? You can never lose. How can you lose? How can you lose with Jesus Christ? Now, can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? And answer this truthfully. What is your greatest fear? What is your greatest fear? I'll give you one hour. Now, what is your greatest fear? Okay. What is mysophobia? Mysophobia, it is an extreme fear of germs, also known as germaphobe. I know you know how we Mendel, how we Mendel. <laughs> yeah. This is his fear, mysophobia. He is afraid. That's why when I'm watching uh, AGT, America's Got Talent, he never shake hands because he's afraid of germs. He have this phobia. Okay. What is acrophobia? Very good. Fear of heights. Okay. And what is thanatophobia? Fear of tana. <laughs> thanatophobia, it is fear of death. Fear of death or dying process. Okay. Or it is also a fear, you know, um, fear of someone dying. That is thanatophobia. Okay. Now, one time, a young man did a spoken poetry in front of us. He talked about fears. He talked about phobias. He talked about the different phobias people have and concluded at the end of, uh, of his spiel, he said that what men really fear is death. At the end, at the end of it all, now, why people fear about germs? Why do people have mysophobia? Well, because they think that they will be contracted with viruses and bacteria, they will get ill, and eventually they will die. Okay? So why people have acrophobia? Why do people fear of heights? Because they feel that when they are up there, they cannot breathe. Okay? They will feel dizzy. They will fall and they will die. And why do people fear about death? Why do people don't want to talk about death? Thanatophobia. Because we don't want to die. So basically, most phobias, not all, most phobias, everything is about death. We fear death. And when we contemplate about this impending and looming realities of life, about death, what is your natural response? If you think about death, 
What is your natural response? We fear. We fear death. Okay? That's why we will hold on to life as tight as we can because we, want, we don't want to die. We don't want to die. The thought of leaving our loved ones behind or be left behind or seeing our loved ones dying is a very grim scenario for many people. That's why we repulse death and we fear it. So what do we do? What do we do? Most people, they distract themselves with many things so that the thought of death will not occupy their minds. So what they do? Some distractions include social media. They go to social media. People go to SDA, sex, drugs, and alcohol. People, you know, they, they go hobbies. Okay? They do hobbies. And some people, especially the, the young ones, they do to party, party. They go to parties. Right? So, but these things, they are just temporary patch up. They are just temporary. Soon, death will be knocking at their doors. And that is the reality of life. Now, instead of thinking properly, thinking the right way, coming to know Jesus, and preparing yourself for that day when you will breathe your last, you know, the devil, he will see to it that you will not think about Jesus. He will see to it that you will be distracted in so many ways so that you will not think about Jesus Christ. He will tell you the same words he told Eve in Genesis chapter 3. You remember what the devil told Eve? The devil said, you will not surely die. Hey, Sister Gloria, you will not surely die. You will live forever. See? Now, the devil wants to have you that temporary distractions so that the end, at the end, you will lose your life. You will lose your life as well as your true joy in heaven. Again, remember, the goal of the devil is to rob you of your joy. And if that will happen, the devil have won you over and he will welcome you at the gates of hell. You want that to happen? I don't want that to happen to me. People fear death. What kills your joy, number one, is our fear of death. Why do we fear death? It is because, simple, we are not ready. That's a simple reality. Many people fear death. I have talked, I have talked to a lot of people. Why do they fear death? Brother Mike, I'm not ready. Brother Mike, I don't know where I will go after if I die. You see? That is the reality. That is the reality. When I came here, I was scheduled to do a, uh, to take my driver's permit exam at the DMV. I was scheduled. And then I realized, you know, I, I moved the schedule. Sister Faye told me, are you not going to take your DMV today? No. I will take it next Thursday. And my sister told me, are you not going to take your exam today? No, I will take it on Monday. <laughs> then Monday comes. No, I will take it on Friday. You know why? Because I am not ready. I am afraid that I will fail. And most people are afraid of dying because they are not ready. That is the reality. That is the reality. But when I am ready, I took the exam. And glory to God, I passed the exam. Uh -huh. Because I am ready. If you are not ready to die, my brothers, sisters, and friends, then ask the Lord, Lord, don't take me yet. Don't take my life yet. I'm not, ready. I'm not yet ready. You see? People are afraid of dying. They fear that because they are not ready. Okay, they're not ready. Well, we heard the sad news um, about Sister Lunel Richardson. Now, glory to God, I was able to visit her and met her in person. And I want to thank uh, Sister Eileen is not here, Eileen Bush. I want, to, I want to thank her personally because the first time I met Sister Eileen, she mentioned me, Brother Mike, go and visit Sister Lunel. Go plan a visit to her. 
And I want to thank Brother Derek for bringing me along to see her. And it's an honor. It's an inspiring moment. Short, but a wonderful and encouraging visit. You know, until now, when I saw Sister Marilyn, until now, her words still rings in my ear. You know, when we came to visit her, she was saying, thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. She keeps on repeating those words. And then I heard these words from her. She said, I am ready. She said those words. Mm -hmm. Well, you know Sister Anita K. Sister Anita K. Bland. She talks about death every time. The first time me and Carlos visited her, she talks about death. And then on her 75th birthday, she talks about death. She talks about death as if you know, it's like Disneyland <laughs> for kids. She was smiling. Mary Charles, she, she's smiling. You know, she's smiling. And she keeps on repeating, you know, brother, my brother, Carlos, sister Mary, my dad and my mom, they are buried in Oak Hill Cemetery. I told Brother Derek Oak Ridge, <laughs> but in Oak Hill, I'm sorry, Oak Hill Cemetery. And soon I will be buried beside them. You know, and she said, I am ready. Anytime, Lord, she said, anytime, Lord, I am ready. You know what? Every time she tells that to us, she's smiling. She's smiling. And Sister Vera Herbert, you know, she said, I am happy to serve the Lord. You know, these three sisters whom I have met recently, these three sisters are a classic example of growing in Christ's likeness, in having a Christ-centered life. They never falter in their faith. They never falter in their faith. Sisters Anita Kay and Sisters Vera Herbert are faithful up to this day. Mm -hmm. And Sister Lodell Richardson, faithful until her last breath. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now the question is, are you ready? Or are you afraid? If you are ready, are you sure you're going to heaven? Okay. Those are the most important questions that you should be asking yourselves. Now, I asked you a while ago, what is your greatest fear? You know, my greatest fear is not to see my loved ones in heaven. You know, not to see my family, not to see my friends, not to see all of you. That is my greatest fear. That's why, that is why I made a vow to the Lord. I will dedicate my life in sharing the gospel to everyone, to everyone. Now, answer me yes or no. Do you know that you will die someday? Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, those who want to go to heaven, raise your hands. <laughs> now, I, I will not ask. <laughs> those who want to heaven, raise your hands. I will not ask who wants to go first. There. Now, all of us want to go to heaven. Let me encourage you this. Don't fear death. Never fear death. Okay. Because we need to die. You need to die. The, this body needs to die because this flesh cannot enter heaven. You know? And you know, it is quite ironic. People don't want to die, but in fact, they are already dead. Uh huh. And I call them, you know, dead man walking. Dead man walking. 
Jesus said, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Jesus was talking about two types of death. One is physical death, and the other one is spiritual death. Okay. When you continuously live in your sins, even if you are alive, you are spiritually dead. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. Now, brethren, if you are ready, don't fear death. Do not fear death. Embrace it. Your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ conquered death so that you can stare death in the face. It is, in fact, a wonderful event. Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I am torn between two things, two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. And he said, in fact, we are confident and we would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Apostle Paul repeatedly talks about that in just, in just totally different ways. Because he knew that there is nothing about death to be feared if you are truly faithful and are ready to face the Lord. It is a gain, he said. It is far better, he said. And you will be at home with the Lord. Paul emphasized the reward far outweighs our sufferings. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Okay. Again, remember as we have pointed out in our previous lessons, you know, the point of living is to seek happiness, right? And that happiness can be truly found in God. The point of dying, on the other hand, is also happiness or joy. The psalmist says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You make known to me the part of life, the way that you and I will take in this life to be joyful has been given to us by God. And you can find out in the Bible. You can read that in the Bible. And the path will lead us to the path of life. That path will lead you to the real life, to eternal life, where there is fullness of joy, a complete joy, where there is no tears, where there will be no pain, where there will be no sufferings. And I'm sorry, for the ladies, there will be no soap operas. There will be no telenovelas. There will be no television dramas up there to make you sad and to make you cry. Again, there is only complete joy and pleasures forevermore. That is in heaven when you and I die. Now you see that the joy in living is in God and that the joy in dying is also in God. Now, how can you miss the beauty of dying? Now, if all of these things are made known to everybody, my dear brethren and friends, if you want to be joyful, if you want to have a joyful life here on earth, live a Christ-centered life. Grow in Christ's likeness. If you want to have a joyful life in the afterlife, live a Christ-centered life. Grow in Christ's likeness. Destroy that fear of death that kills our joy. Now, let me call on those who have not yet accepted the Lord. This is my plea. Come and study the gospel. Come. Study the gospel and see how you can be saved. You don't have to fear that because Jesus guaranteed that you will cross over death to life if you will truly obey him. You know, why not come to Jesus today? Because great is your reward in heaven. You know that seeing a dead body of a loved one inside the coffin, it's not a pretty sight for many. But looking beyond, it is a wonderful event. For the Bible said, precious is the sight of the Lord, or in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. See the word? Precious. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel is now yours. God bless us all. And again, for those who want to accept the Lord, please come forward. Study the Bible. Study the gospel. And for us, brothers and sisters, continue to live a Christ-centered life. Continue to grow in Christ's likeness. God bless us all. Shall we stand as we sing the song of invitation?